Hey, how's it going? It is I, TJ Taurai Jack, and I am out at a property, one of these properties that are in the heart of the CBD. But as a property investor myself and an author, it is difficult to see other like-minded people who are doing exactly what I'm doing, which is finding old buildings and converting them into livable spaces. Today, I get to have the privilege, and you also have to get the privilege, of watching out one off the guys killing it in an area called Boxberg in the heart of Gauteng in South Africa and is turning out old buildings and making them livable like this one. Boom boom, how's it going? Welcome in Leroy. How's it going? TJ, how are you my man? I'm alright brother, how's it going? Good, good yourself? Alright, good. Cool man. We are out in Boxberg uh -huh. and um, Boxberg being uh, one of those places where is it fun being investing in and or is it not? Look, Boxburg is great. I, I enjoy Boxburg, guys. Doesn't have the traffic you guys have in Randburg and Santon. Yeah. It's close to the airport. Yeah. Properties are cheaper. There's a demand. Yeah. And I and I grew up here. I went okay. to school at Boxburg High. Right, right. Um, I've got a property, a couple of properties around the area. I live not far. My mother lives there. Yeah. Um, so Boxburg was easy because it's where I'm from. Okay. Basically. If you've been here for the first time, if you've never been here before, we talk about anything and everything around property. I'm a property investor, so is Leroy, and today we are actually checking out one of his properties that he's invested in. And uh, real Lero is going to show us one of his best properties, but this is the one that he chose. I don't know why he's chosen it. Do you know anything? I mean, you were born here. Yeah. So you know a little bit, a couple of things about Boxbeck. I was trying to figure out the name Boxbeck. Where does that come from? <laughs> You, yeah, you went a bit deep there, the name <laughs> Boxburg. Yeah. I don't know where Boxburg comes from, TJ. Okay. I'm 35 years old. I don't know, actually. Yes, I'm going to lie to you if I tell you where Boxburg comes from. So let me educate you. I mean, we, you're going to educate us about your property? Yeah. But let me educate you about Boxburg. <laughs> okay. So Boxburg is, for some of you who don't know where Boxburg is, so Boxburg is in Gauteng in the East Rand. Mm -hmm. uh, and the name Boxburg actually comes through from back in the 19, no, nine, not 19, 1880, I think it's it was, a, it's right? A, 1880, yeah. that's, that's what TJ said. My We're going and, there. And out of that, I think they had found gold here. You know, it was a gold, uh, yes, the yes, mining yes, yes, city, the right? mining, yeah. And out of that, um, I think it was the Secretary General at that time, uh, and his last name was Bok. Uh, and then, you know, everything was back, back at that time. Yeah. So Box back came to be. My man. Yeah. Now, so guys, that is area research for you there. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> that is area research. That's going back to 1880 or yeah. 70. Deep, man. Eh? That's, that's well done. But I also just want us to talk about something else about Box back. It's a, it's, it's, it's an old suburb. Mm. And I'm always saying to people, you need to invest in old suburbs because that's where yeah. the money is. Um, but if we look at it on the other side, I was just checking out some stats around TPN and I looked at the area and run about 50% of the properties in Boxberg, they are all still freestanding houses. Mm -hmm. And one of your property that we are going to be seeing today is a freestanding property. Yeah. What opportunities do you see with freestanding properties? Look, with freestanding properties, the expenses are obviously also lower. You don't have levies to pay. Yeah. So, and with freestanding properties, you, you have the freedom to paint them orange and, and, and blue. <laughs> there's no big brother. There, there's no big brother. And you can cut them up if you like. Like, I've got a multi let sure. not far from here. Where I've got rooms and stuff, which is, which in a sectional title is difficult to do that. You, yeah. Properties are supposed to look the same. You yeah. can't really have multi-let so you can be more creative you can up the income you can increase the value of it yeah with with freestanding properties yeah so on the, on the same breath on the freestanding or the free holding it is called mm. um we're also beginning to see quite a bit in terms of a lot of free holding being turned into sectionalizing so they're turning into developments yeah the average stands in Boxbeck, what, what is it? A thousand squares, two thousand? 
It's huge. I would say about around there, thousand ish, nine hundred. Sure. Um, Cause it's a, <coughs> especially yeah, that's these old suburbs. Yeah, yeah. Huge yards. Yeah. And huge yards. I looked. I was looking. You know, before I, I invest in any neighborhood, um, and I mean, you can tell us why you're investing in Boxback. But for me, it's also about can the people in the neighborhood carry the rent that I'm going to push in, mm -hmm. right? And I was looking at Boxback, and it's not a rich neighborhood yeah. uh, or rich town. Um, if you look at it from an income perspective, you're looking at around about people earning maybe about. 20,000 rand per year, all the way to around about 1.2, 1.3 there. So it's, it's not like the high class, mm. it's sitting on around about, you know, entry level employees to middle class. Yes. Right? But what opportunities comes with people that are earning that, that sort of income? You know, I mean, you need to look, <coughs> you need to balance that out, isn't it? Look, you've, got a, you, you've always got a demand in that, in that price range there. Yeah. We always say that buy houses that the average person can afford to buy yeah. and that the average person can afford to rent. 100%. And Boxburg gives you that because we're in the inner city now of Boxburg. Right, right. Where your rentals go anything from what? To, to there's a rooms for 2,000 up until let's say 5,000 or something. Then you have a park down there which is a township. Yeah. Right? And if you go further up, you've got a nice well, suburb. Well, what's the rent in township? Three. You know, there's actually a huge demand in townships. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so there's a huge demand. If, you, if a property comes up in the township, in my township, yeah, yeah. for rental today, yeah. tomorrow's taken. Wow. If it's for sale today, by this weekend, you'll have two or three offers on it. Boom! Townships, guys. Cassie yeah. properties. It's, 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 I started in townships, basically. Yeah. I used to buy and sell these, these cheap properties in townships. Okay. That was tip number one from, from Leroy, and that was a free tip. Now, we are in the heart of CBD. Um, just behind us is the city of Ekureleni. Uh, this is the municipality. Yeah, the municipality. Right, and the library is just library out here. here. And boom. Boom. That's your building. And by the way, there's a refurbished lake. I don't know when they're going to open it. Did you know that they refurbished the whole lake? So it's been closed for like two years. How do you refurbish a lake? I don't know. The, the smelling and okay. cleaning the lake and they put new brides and lapas. I don't know. I'll, we'll see when it's open or what it looks like. Okay. So this is your property, Leroy? Yes, sir. This is your property? It's mine, yes. Yours? Yeah, mine. Yours? It's mine. It's some of the banks still Oh, but it's mine. <laughs> The <laughs> bank has a little bit, but it's mine. Well done. It's mine. It's mine. Well done. <laughs> so, I think historically this would have never been achieved. People used to come to Boxburg for mining purposes. Yeah. People used to come down here for for a job. Mm -hmm. But you are creating a job. Yeah, sure. You are you are now putting in assets. Now, you wait for a bit. But this asset space you for how long? For, for until I decide to sell it. Until you decide life, to sell it. Whatever, yeah. Why why do you invest in property, Lira? Sure. You know, I started in property for the money, I'm not gonna lie to you. I started I started buying at auctions. I'm not gonna act all <laughs> like I came into it too. He's to in it for the money. Housing or whatever for P quality housing. Now, that's, now it is that, but it didn't start there. <laughs> Did you start there? No. Did you start with having a whole bigger purpose to no, 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 I don't no, know. for the money for me. Money, yeah. Yeah. Money came in and the passion came in later. Yes. Uh, after I now started to understand what I understand, uh, what I now understand. Um, and there's a bigger cost to it now. Mm. But before, yes, it was. It was money. And then you started seeing, okay, I started buying and selling. Then, then I realized after buying and selling a lot, yeah. I needed to keep some of these things. Sure. Started keeping one or two. And then it came into creating quality. And then I, then I came around um, professional investors and they taught me about quality yeah. accommodation and cash flow. Yeah. But it started out for the money. When you're saying cash flow, what do you mean? Um, cash flow. Yeah. Rent comes in, yeah. covers your bond and other expenses, and there's a profit or cash flow amount left. Profit, okay. Profit at okay. the end of that. Yeah. After your rent covers all your expenses, and that's what you want. You want to invest for cash flow. You want to create more cash flow every month, every year. Um, so that's what I mean by cash flow. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to take in a short walkthrough into the building, and uh, we're going to take you right around the building, and Leroy is going to show us exactly what it's all about. Let's go. Okay. So watch the cars. So, so it's the end of the month, so it's busier than if, normal. If we just look here, you've got outside lights. Yeah. Why, why do you have the Because it's dark light? at night. Sometimes the municipality lights do not work. Okay. And some tenants come, some tenants work night shift, some come at night. It's the inner city. Yeah. So you'll find it's tricky sometimes. There's guys that, which I have to chase away now and just again. Just to hover around. They might hover be, around. Yeah. Um, is this dark parking here? Yeah. So and this is a busy road. It's a busy road. Right? So so if you have got tenants who are coming in, they are walking. So in other words, the lights are creating a bit of security. A bit of security for them. For them. So at night, it switches on six whenever there's five, six, yeah. and it's, it lights up the whole building around the building. Who pays for that? I pay for that. So that's communal. You carry yeah. that load. Yeah, I carry it. But obviously, um, with the... The, the, the differences between the, the communal and the boxes, obviously, the yeah. electrical boxes, so you yeah. work that out so somehow. If I were Leroy, I'm not going to tell him. I just put in solar there, but that's just me. It's LED or solar, eh? Yeah. Mm. I, you, oh, you heard that? Okay, I let's go. That. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> all right. That's a good cool. tip there, thanks. All right. So we're going in utilizing the main gate. Yeah, by the parking gate. Okay, by the parking so gate. So there, there's, the, there's a gate, so we can walk to this one, yeah. that tenants can come in. And but Leroy, this building was never like this. I mean, I used to drive around, because we got our property down the road here, and there used to be a big shop here. <coughs> yeah. Like, um, this was a video town. Video town? This was a video town. There was a Nando's here as and well. And that was a Nando's. Okay. And, and, and you, you gutted this all out and you have now made it... Um, so now with the Nando's 100% was... 100% residential? 100% residential, yeah. What, what was it zoned for though in the beginning? It's actually zoned for business one. Business one? Oh, business okay, one. so you could toggle. So I could, but then I brought it down again. Now it's on the res. Now it's on the res. Yeah. That's a, okay, so, cool. So, it was, so this was, so this year, yeah. from there, up until the gate was a full video town. <coughs> but the challenge is, you have a main road with cars, but you don't have foot traffic. I see. You, you had to break this up, right? Because it was a... Yeah, the, it, was a, it was a video town. Okay. A shop. Yeah. So it was a, it was a huge shop. Right. Um, and that was, this, was the, this was an existing entrance going up to the units, the top okay. units. And then you had nine huge residential units Okay. On top. 100 squares, 90 squares, 80 Sweet. squares, those huge ones. Okay. So... Are we going in? Um, we're going to go in the other way. Okay, cool. We're going to go in the so other way. this is way. pedestrian. Anyone can come in. They come through here. Yeah. yeah, they open there. Then they've got a... So you've got a key um, Plus a... Plus a tag system that, that takes tag you, system that you from that side. Awesome. Cool. And then that side was the Nando's. All right. So we were thinking of, 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 do we keep a bit of retail, but nothing was working here. Okay. Well, nothing, there's no foot traffic, a lot of cars, that's the, that's the main road there, the Commissioner and Leopold. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. So that's, I said, where the, well, that's where the money is. That's where the money is. Because that's where my building is. Is that where you're, yours is in market, eh? <laughs> I'm in market. Market, yeah. You, yeah, just this one, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So they drive in from the electric gate. Yeah, so they come in here. Right. But these are the only guys with cars have the remote okay. for this. But so why, why do you do that? Why can't you not just give everyone remote? No, because anyone can come steal these cars here, so... Sure, that makes sense. Yeah, so... Right. It's only the guy with cars have remote, the rest of them have tags and they don't have cars. Okay. In terms of your parking, what was the ratio of your parking to, together with the unit? So we've got 31 units and we've got about... 13 parkings can push it to 15. So it's about half. Okay, one It's one about one. half. And why it was basically, look, we worked with an existing building. So it wasn't like we could, we had to maneuver around what was yes, here. Yes. The parking, this was a parking. And I, th I think for me, that's where the, the, the secret is. Because a lot of times people, 
we get a piece of land and then we go to the council and then the council tells us for every unit you need to have a 1.5 but then when you see a building like this one you're like thinking oh where's my 1.5 parking yeah. where you come from so this is not going to work um, but you work hand in hand with the council I mean we yeah. have spoken many a times you are at the council yeah. doing some stuff um, how do they then treat this is, is there a concession I mean, what process do you need to be taking in for them to allow you <coughs> to have lesser than what the law is saying? Yeah. Look, the building doesn't actually need park because it's in the city. Okay. And because I've got this huge municipality parking here. Yeah, yeah. Which I'm going to steal from them soon. <laughs> I'm going to close it up. Off the record. Okay. That's a, <laughs> which means I'm going to talk to them, but obviously. You know, some people say, some people say it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. <laughs> um, <laughs> so guys, that's, a, that's sometimes a tip too. Yeah. Sometimes it's better to do something and then fix it 100%. afterwards and then, then not do it at all. Yeah. But I mean, your, you, this particular property of yours comes, it's a unique property. Mm. So you already have this space here, but in the same breath, you also have that parking. Mm. It's, it's just dead parking. So yeah, no one's using it. So you can utilize that in you, within your conversation with the council. That can also come into play because that's their land, isn't it? Yeah, that's, this is the council land. Yeah, makes sense. Wow. You got cameras on here. I had to, man. Someone drove into the gate. Yeah. And especially the ladies were a bit nervous, saying, listen, put cameras in for us, so then I put cameras in. But now your, your camera's boss are in the tree now. I need to cut this tree, yeah. Uh, you cut soon, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All so, right. So we'll get that tree out of the way soon. Awesome yeah. stuff. So let's go in to see one of your units, um, what it looks like. How many units do you have all together now? That's 31. 31 units. Yeah. And uh, what are they? <clears throat> they are two beds, so there's about five, two beds. Okay. Then... One beds and bachelors. Okay. So before before we go into the units, I just want us to um, I just want us to ha have a conversation here. So the, for some people that don't know a giza, this is a giza. Why did you have them outside though? Because they wouldn't fit into the ceiling, and there was only place you could actually have them. Then there wasn't enough space in the bathroom, so it made more sense to put them outside. Okay. All right. And I also see here you've got. Um, you know, in West Africa, this is delicacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rats and mice, but you... I wish it was a delicacy here too, so they can come take them. <laughs> mm. Is it a problem here? Not anymore. When we started, it was a problem. Okay. When we started, it was a problem, but not anymore. We put... Um, you see the drains. I close all the drains around the building. Yeah. Close yeah. all the drains. Yeah. Um, and I put these in. Now there's no more rats. Okay. So cool. now, because they came out of the drains, right? But now that it's closed, they're probably going to someone. They're probably going to your building. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> you go pre? Are they pre? Are these prepaid? No, they're not. Uh, these are normal no meters. Normal meters, yeah. So let, let's talk about. You got a meter here, yeah. but Like, but why do you have a meter here? You got a couple of meters everywhere. Mm. So obviously, you want to see the consumption of every unit. Okay. Yeah, and. Walk us through that process. So you got a main meter from outside. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's your municipality meter. Yeah. You come into the building, and now you've got a meter. There's a normal meter. Yeah. And that normal meter, what happens? I mean, do, do you do meter readings? Do meter readings. We check. Who the does the meter readings? The uh, tenant or or your property manager? Property manager. Okay, so your property manager <coughs> does. Um, and do you get guys that do disputes? Like my meter is not running that much you know I no i haven't yet you remember um, i'm so a truck driver i've been away you no, yeah, no we haven't had i've had a little bit with electricity to say the meters some have said that the electricity is going too, too, fast. too fast okay but it was just uh, it was him was using too much so so those that was the only one i haven't had any issues with the water yet so this is a, this this actually solves the problem of I see some investors, you know, what they do is they put one meter and then they split per head to each individual. Yeah, which is unfair. But for me, this, this works a charm. Number one option would be prepaid water meter. Yeah. That would be you manage your own water and you manage your own. Sure. Which will take a lot of pressure 
But why don't you have prepaid uh, water meters? Ah, I would have said budget. <laughs> you're, no, you're right. But I would have said budget about hundred thousand to 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 put the prepaid meters in. Hundred percent. So for yeah. me, because it was locked down and. The building was empty and there was a lot of expenses I need to cover. They would have been in long ago if it wasn't yeah. for that. Okay. So, so that will be price number one will be prepaid water meters. Your, your, and then your, um, your geysers, what are they on? Are they on um, solar or are you running normal electricity normal, on them? Normal. Normal. Okay. Cool. Again, I, budget. Again, budget. Okay. But if you're saying budget, I mean, when you're going in into a project, right, you, you know exactly how much you're going to spend. And when we're talking from an investor perspective, yeah. whenever we're talking about budget, it's about how much you want to put in for the results that you're yeah. trying to get, right? And it's always about creating the functionality or a functionable building where it is operational mm. and you can have people staying in it, right? Yeah. And you can rip the reward of that. Mm. And I think this is what you've done here. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. It's, it, look at it. It, it. it was easy, but it's nice now that it's finished. Okay. So, so yeah, praise God. Awesome. So you, you drive in, you park here. Park here. What, um, what is this alley here? I mean, for so me, this, I would have uh, put in a room I know, here. I know you. You would have put in a room. <laughs> I also want to have a home. Let me tell you, before yeah. we start, um, so I do fun well there. Before we start, yeah. when we started this project, I wanted 50 units in. Five zero. Five zero. that was the goal. And the council dropped you to? The council dead. dropped me to, then I said 40, no, the architect dropped me to okay. 40. And she said, uh, no, why, are you working, why are you not working with a good architect who's visionary like you? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it just couldn't with these old buildings, and and, and we couldn't get 50, yeah. so then we had 40. <laughs> yeah. And then the council came and said a minimum dwelling should be 30 squares in a Okay. So then they brought it down, so we had to work around the 30 squares, and then it came down to 31. Okay. So 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 I I actually wanted to make this a unit. Yeah. Um, I wanted this to be a unit. Yeah. And. But I couldn't, I had to have a refuse area for it. Okay. All right, so th well. this works as your refuse area. Yeah. Quite big for a, for a smaller building. Mm. I mean, in relation to your building, and I mean, I've seen smaller ones. But how, how are you finding the bins with the cancer? How are you winning with the bins? Because that's, yeah, uh... that's been a consistent problem with many investors that I know. They can't get bins from the councils and things like that. How do you work around that? Getting bins is not... What the council did do is they charged me about a 10,000 rand of refuse charge. So we had a fight now for the last few months sure. to bring it down. Yeah. So they were charging me 18, 18 business um, refuse charges for shops. Okay, sure. So we brought that down now. But, but that was because of your building, it was zoned business one. Though. But it was still wrong. Okay, okay. It was still wrong. Yeah. So, so the bins are easy. Bins I can get whenever. I look now, especially with this project, I've met everyone in every yeah, department. <laughs> I've got their cell phone numbers on my phone. I've made good friends right. now in, in Boxburg because of this. Especially because it's opposite the municipality as well. Sure. Right. So, so for a lot of you, you're thinking that you know property is one of those difficult things to go into. The reality is that the moment you get your feet wet and you're doing stuff, then all of these things start coming into play. You start meeting different architects, you start meeting people at the council, and the things that you are sitting back and thinking that these are huge problems, they start going away because you start meeting the right people, mm -hmm. the people that can solve the problems for you. Is it hard? Yes. Is it easy? Yes. It can be done. That's the moral of mm -hmm. the story. Can we jump in into one of the units? Yeah, let's jump in. You got another security gate here. Yeah. Um, so everyone else got a key. So yeah, so they got a key here. Um, this one they actually asked me. They and asked for it. They the asked tenants for it. asked. Yeah, for they this asked gate. for it. They asked for this gate. Okay. So this one was in here. Right. Um, so we put this the one in. Okay. So the main thing is the tenants are concerned because it's inner city because there's a lot of ladies that stay alone, security, yeah. safety. So and obviously they're your clients. You want them to stay long. Hundred so percent. They yeah. feel safe. If they're happy. Yeah. Security gate, and I put it in for them. The, this has been all the buildings. Whenever I'm buying buildings, all mm. buildings, 
this is neglected. Yeah. I, I see uh, when was the last service, it would say 1992. Yeah. And I'm like thinking insurance versus this. Mm. If this has been last said as in 1992, but you're still paying insurance, you're not really paying for any yeah, insurance there that's because that's true. from a compliance perspective, if, mm. if anything then happens, you're out of compliance. They're not mm. going to pay you. But I think, yeah, that's true. That's true. But I think the older, they weren't that strict. Yeah, yeah. They didn't have all the... The, the regulations that they have now on fire, which is a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Expensive thing. Yeah. But it's a good thing, obviously, when, if something happens, you yeah. know. But it was actually a nightmare, too, with the, because the fire. Was, I didn't know fire is that expensive. It is. Fire so, was about 150 grand on this property. Uh, <laughs> I was like, what? It's like, my man, these pipes here. When you've got a fire, <laughs> That's when you're going to see yeah. 150k working yeah. for you. Um, yeah, let's go up. So yeah, so the fire regulations were, 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 were important here as well. So we're just going upstairs and downstairs you've got how many units downstairs? Downstairs we've got 13. One three. One three. So that's where the video town was and that's where the Nando's was. Okay, great. And then up here we still have a couple so of units. So this is the first floor. So here we've got 13 as well. So I see you've got two, five units here mm -hmm. on the pinky level. What the hell, bro, with the pink? Don't you like pink? This I is, do. eh? I, I, I do, but... Uh, you know how many colors we played around with? I'm not going to lie to you. We played around with different colors. With the architect. They said, Leroy, just paint this building gray. I said, no. Man, let's, let's light it up. Okay. Let's light it up. Let's this light up. Box this was my idea. We can see that. Yeah, this was my idea. Yeah. I don't know. I just always had a vision of colorful. This was before your daughter was born, isn't it? Was she born? Two, she's two now. So she was. She I think was, she's the most. She, she was born. She yeah, was, she she's could the be. motivator of this yeah, pink. Yeah, yeah, I think she could. Mm -hmm. But this pink looked nice, eh? The colors look nice. I don't nice. know. Hey, we'll don't you like it? We'll see when maintenance kicks in. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see when maintenance kicks in and might go grey again. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, it, for now it made the statement. And That's it looks good. cool. No, well done. It yeah. looks good. This is the first floor and it takes you down onto the main road. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So the guys that don't have cars come in from there. Yeah. With tags. Okay, cool. You see, they're all different sizes. So this is a bit of a... With working with these old buildings, you have to work around the existing walls as well. So this is a, a bit of a one bed. Okay, so this is a one bed. With the toilet. It comes there. in with a kitchen here. And, and is that the toilet in This there? is the toilet in here. What, what's the average size here? The average size, it varies. It, comes, it goes from about 25 to about 40. About 40. 45 ish. Okay. And your 45, is that a two bed or one bed? That's one a two bed. bed. That's a two, two bed. bed. Yeah, 45, okay. 50. Yeah, 45, 50. So the lower it is, is a one bed. The higher it is, it's a two bed. Mm. Right? And I see you've got prepaid meters. Yes, in, sir. Right? How, how does that work for you? Is it working? Is it not working? It's working. Right? It's working. Tenants tempering, not tempering? No, I think with these new ones, I haven't had a temper problem. They say these are the newish ones, yeah. which is difficult to temper. And the other problems I've got old ones, which they tried, but they always get caught anyway. Sure, sure. They always get caught because there's a problem and you come in and you see they've used the thing and obviously then... How do you manage that? So now you've got a tenant that's been stealing from you. I mm. mean, that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah. So how do you manage that? Give them a notice. And you give them a notice. So as I said, yeah, I haven't had, I've got multi-lets and a couple where, where there is a bit of a thing. Okay. But if you check it often enough, they know that, yes. that it gets yes. checked. So they know that they can't mess with it because someone's going to come check it. Awesome stuff. Soon. And obviously you've got city properties which send you the statements. The statements if you, you can compare you can between compare. your council uh, bill and this bill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you're underpaying, overpaying, then there's a leakage somewhere. Someone is still somewhere. somewhere. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's another thing that, uh, you know, people go through to these seminars and things like that, or they go into, into um, uh, learn how to do property yeah. and things like that. But the administration behind it, yeah, that's... Right? not a lot of people think of it, 
or should I say maybe some of the trainings that are out there don't cover it yeah. because obviously all of us will manage things differently but there's a lot of administration in it's, it's, in, it's quite intense yeah. actually to manage properties and for some people they want to manage it for themselves mm -hmm. which is okay I don't advocate for it um, but for some people when you've got when you're managing yourself small things like this yeah. where you've got the council is billing you a thousand rand you are collecting 500 rand mm. where's the other 500 yeah. rand going and that's the things that you miss and yeah. that's money coming out of your out pocket, of your pocket. yeah okay cool and those are, but those are difficult things to, maybe it's good you don't teach they don't teach all these things because if if you knew about all these things you'll never you probably won't get in <laughs> okay so this is the whole thing this is the uh, floor now coming through um, I like this design. Why didn't you call Pinky here also? Um, no, 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 no. This was this was actually just the contractor. Right. It was creative, and he put them in. So. Right, right. So. But this is also like very cheap, and you know, yeah. but, but it creates but a it, different facade. You're not just seeing the. Because it would have looked very ugly with with the. Uh, Hundred So he was he was actually quite creative here. Yeah. Hundred percent. Okay. Cool. And we're going into another unit again. Um, you got heavy doors, fireproof. Fireproof, my man, fire regulations. Right, right. And uh, another unit here as well. <laughs> Quite, it's got everything you need here. Yeah, it's nice and light. It's a little bit of a nice view. Right. The lake here, your one bed. Oh, wow, yes. Mm, these ones, are the, the, the first floor and the top floor is actually quite nice views. Um, yeah. All of them don't have balconies though, which will be, um, some have balconies, some don't. Yeah. So we got a nice view. So do you charge more for these units here that have the views? The view, yeah. So I think the the the. Oh, it's not it varies. A, oh, it's not a priority for people to have the view. Eh? So this one, I think this one will go for what? This one will probably go for like the the, the bachelors, depending on the size, between thirty five and thirty eight. Yeah. So the nicer ones are about 380-ish and the smaller ones that are not that great are about 35-ish. Okay. Cool. But it looks nice, eh? Nice and cute. It does nice look nice. Um, I like your creativity on the door here. I don't know whether to show here. <laughs> but I like your creativity. You've got a sliding door here. Yeah. Instead yeah. of having a normal... Um, um, door that will swing either way because now you put ample space inside mm -hmm. and you still have ample space here on the corridor yeah. as well. So, so it looks cool. They just the problem is people are so rough with them. I see. You see tenants because tenants. So they are delicate doors. They are delicate doors. That's, a, that's the only challenge which we need to actually make them a bit more stable. Maybe we should just put a plastic here, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> It'll work. Oh god. So this area here, where we're going, what is this one now? This is the fire um, escape. Hold on, what is this one now? Okay. So these are for the units. These are for the units? Yeah. So your main switches, right? Main switches, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Nice and clean, and then you've got the meters inside. Meters inside. I'm okay. able. All right, cool. So this is your fire escape. Oh, this is your fire escape for the building? For the building. So something for, especially for these guys on this side. Yeah. That's also a fire regulation. Don't ask me. I actually forgot why that's there. Okay. But it so looks that, nice. It's ventilation. You ventilation, can, yeah, it's a ventilation. You can feel that it's, it's um, what do you call it? It's, a, it's area. Yeah. yeah, so that's well done. So the, that was there for the ventilation. Yeah. As I said, that we've got, maybe we'll chat about all the different challenges that, that, that came up with this. Yeah. Okay, so we're going all the way upstairs. So upstairs, this is the second floor. So there's 13 on the on the ground floor, 13 on the first floor, and five. Awesome stuff. And these ones are the nice ones because these ones got big, huge windows. Yeah, but we can't go in. We yeah. can't go in. There's tenants in there's there. There's tenants now. in here. That's a bummer of some of these walkthroughs because we can't go in in all the units because yeah, so some you know, of the units, the tenants are occupied and we're doing this during the week yeah. as well. So you normally find that the units that are not that nice are open and the nicer ones. Are. <laughs> right, so, okay, so literally, we, 
th thanks for having us the opportunity to actually have a walkthrough on your property and being um, a little bit naked mm. to tell us what, what's been happening behind the investor. Because uh, I think a lot of us, we just see these investors and like, oh, okay, I want to be that investor. But there is a real hard work behind mm. the investor. Let's talk about numbers. <clears throat> How much did you buy this place for? So initially, it was a long negotiation. I put an offer for, it was on for 3.5, I put an offer for 2.3. Okay. Why, uh, why did you put in an offer for 2.3? Because that was, a f that was what for me it worked okay. at 2.3. That's what I wanted. Sure. And I was just well, testing. I was testing it because because it was mismanaged. Yeah. It was a distressed building. I was just testing and see how desperate they were to to sell. To sell. What was the condition of the building at that particular time? I mean, just just take us mm. through the, between the seller, the actual building. What was the condition of the individuals? You know, the individuals were well, the individuals were actually wealthy people. It was video town owners. Oh, okay. So they own, now where the video town is, they own all of the buildings. Sure. So, oh, okay. So they're selling off for whatever reason. One lady had cancer, one of the, um, they probably going to reinvest into something else. Sure. And obviously their video towns were not making money. Yes, yes. Netflix, Showmax, DSTV, no one, yeah. no one wants to come to the inner city anymore to hire, to hire a movie. Mm -hmm. And so that was the challenge, that was the, their challenges. And the building was around on the head. They were charging about 2.5 thousand for a hundred square unit. Really? Mm. Wow. But I suppose, look, for me, uh, that was not, Residential was not their business. Yeah. Residential was for you to be there, but hey, come down so that you can hire videos mm. or whatever CDs or not. And that was the real business for them. Yeah. So, so, so they, were, they were mismanaging. Okay. That was in a state. Right. If, if, if I am to, um, if we were to go in now, right, into... So, so you bought it now for two, three? No, 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 no. I put in the offer for two, three. Yeah. Rejected. Um, started negotiating. Two, started negotiating 2.5. Yeah, yeah. And then I held out at 2.5. And then tough, actually, the bank came. They said, listen, let's see what this thing works. And then they came down to 3 million. Okay. They said 3 million. Okay. And then sat down. I said, no, let's just hold it out a little bit more. They're going to... And tough said, said, let's not waste the deal, let's not lose it, let's close it, it works at 3 million. Okay. I said, no, I just, you know, sometimes you just want to win. I said, no, 2.7. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we eventually closed on 2.9. Well done. So, so yeah. It was, a, it was a while, it was a few months. It was a few months of back and forth, back and forth. Okay, okay. Back and forth. And, and, and you, you came in, a bigger project like this one, this is big. And renovating a big project like this one from a, from a professional mm. team. Mm. You, you don't want to hire a bucky guy to come uh. and do this. Um, how, did, how, did, how did that journey go by? Now, now with, with, with property, like now I've, I've bought a few, rented a few properties in my life. Yeah. And this so, is not your first one? This was my first. I, I, think, I think we need to disclose that. Because people see us now in this big building and like, hey, I want to be like Leroy. And yeah. they've never done a one bed, one bath. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. the learnings that you get from a one bed, one bath, when you get to this level here, it's just times 10, times 30, mm, like you have mm. in this building. The problems are still the same. But the learnings, you need to do them when you're starting small. Yeah. So my, my biggest thing is start small, learn fast, and grow fast. You yeah. know? Get the foundation, get the experience, get the team, yeah. understand proper, understand the basic numbers. They don't change much, changes slightly. Add a zero. Add, add a few more zeros and, yeah, yeah. and complicated things and yields and all of this. And, 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 but but it, that basically doesn't change. So start with the base, it's like a triangle. You start with your buy to lets. Right, right. And then you get up to your whatever, flip, student accommodation. Yes, you know, then yes. you go up to your developments and your commercial and then... 100%. So, but start small. A lot of people, and, and I find that often, and it annoys me sometimes, where you say I've got 20 hectares where I want to build a mall. Help yeah. me raise the finance. You say, listen, man, what's your experience? Nothing. <laughs> Hasn't bought 
He hasn't sold, he hasn't bought. He doesn't even own his own house. He doesn't, and you say, okay, maybe that is not where we start today. 100%. Let's, yeah. let's start with the basics. So I think, yeah, start with the basics. Sheriff's yeah. auctions, flats. 100%. And, and that's where you started off from, right? Yeah. Let's come back to the professional team. Um, now, this is your first big project, and you're going in now into working with a professional team. Mm. Um, which professions did you actually work with? So they changed from what I had. Normally you have your attorney, your accountant, your... Right. And then it changed to your QS. Right. Architect. Yeah. QS, your architect. And then the architect was the project manager as well. Yeah. And then we had a structural engineer. We had the fire okay. engineer. Yeah. We had a sewer. The municipality gave me rubbish about sewer. Yeah. So I had to get a sewer guy. In the <laughs> just, just for some of you who don't know what rubbish is, um, they gave him a lot of a lot of compliance to comply with. Yes, <laughs> which is a good thing. But at the time, you want to get it finished, right? Yeah. And 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 well, that's how you learn. Yeah. What else did I have to get in here? The fire. I've got the QS, the 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 architect, the sewer and obviously guy. the builders themselves. The builders the themselves. The builders and the builders obviously come with the plumbers and sure. the electricians. Hundred percent. And 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 they get all those certificates for you there. Yeah. So those are the teams. So my whole team had to change from the team I had yeah. to the team I have now, which is which is good. Now I've got a strong team that understands. From a professional perspective, for me I've seen that the more I am into better deals, I am working with better quality professionals. Mm. My conversations change, mm. execution changes, right? We talk about it, it's done. Yeah. I'm not chasing around someone. Yeah. You know, I'm, I don't have to come out at the property all the time, see is the towel's done. Mm. It, it's more report-based and it's working smarter. I don't know, how yes. did you find it when you were working here? Look, I think that's, that's a good thing, yeah, because with them, with its professionals, but another thing, remember it's your project, not this. 100%. So yes. that's another thing. Because I, I was sitting in, and, and the thing is, I was sitting in meetings where I didn't know anything, which was a good, th and they would brainstorm and I would, at the end, what do you think about this? And I'd say, no, that doesn't work. What's the cost there? So, so, so the, the lingo even changed when I came here. I thought I knew about property, then I realized I didn't actually know anything about property. Yeah. Because yeah. now now QSs are talking and finance guys in the bank and and and, 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 yeah. and it starts getting it starts getting a bit more complicated the conversations. But that's nice if you got the team. So I didn't have to know everything. They know it and they bring it to me and I was like okay. But what did that, what did that do for you as an individual? I mean you you it's a lot of it's your project. People are speaking Greek mm -hmm. around you. What did that push you to do, if, if it did push you to do anything at all? Push you to ask questions and, and learn. Yeah. So, and that's a nice thing, if you're not, ask the questions, what does that mean? Yeah. I don't know what that means. So, you know, this is this, this, this. Is that necessary? Why is it necessary? Sure. sure. How much is it going to cost? Yeah. Can't we get it cheaper? Those are my questions. Those are my... Your standard questions. Questions right through the thing. Do we need it? Yeah. Why do we need it? Right. The municipality needs it. Why do they need it? How much is it going to cost? Is there a way to do it better? Doesn't look nice there. Can we change it? Sure. So that was basically me asking questions for six months. And these are the things that you not really learn from school. I mean, school gives you the education to kick start. Mm. But for you to be in the business for a longer haul, there is continuous education that you need. Improvement on you as yeah. an individual. And obviously the different projects that are coming through, I always say every project that I do teaches me something else. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to come to a position of, there is no project that comes with no stress, no rubbish, <laughs> as you call it. <laughs> and um, what were your top three challenges that you had on this building? Mm. Three. Number one was the negotiation. <clears throat> right. So with these guys, obviously they're a bit more. They own about a hundred buildings, so they yeah, understand. They're savvy. They're, they're savvy. So they savvy, yeah. right? So I'm coming from the small properties to the bigger properties now. Right. So I'm learning. Yeah. So every time with the with the bank, so the bank takes long. Right. Getting all the things together, and then we had to sign extensions with the OTPs. 
keep yeah. on signing extension with the bank takes long. With the last extension, they, they put in a penalty um, clause, oh, which yeah? I missed. Oh, I missed. Wow. Didn't check it over with the attorney. Just excited yeah. I got the, the next extension because I knew the approval is coming. Yeah. And then they put in a, 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 a penalty penalty clause for delays. Yeah. So a penalty so, clause, what it basically means is that you, you, what you're promising, if you don't perform to that performance, right, to what is being asked for, then we're going to hit you with something, yeah. right? So it's either we are increasing a price. What was your penalty? What, what did they... So there was delay on, 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 on the finance, right. on the approval. So that was about, it came to about 200 and... 60,000 those penalties. So they, they signed and they're like, we chill. Do whatever you need to yeah, do. Yeah, take your time. You're going to pay us our 3.5 that yeah. we're looking for. So when the approval came, Bob, they said, okay, here's your approval, but here's your invoice. For the penalties. For the penalties. Oh, shucks. So I said, no, I'm not paying those penalties. And man, what <laughs> penalties? Penalties for what? Yeah, you got the approval. We said we're going to just and took that, slightly longer. Yeah, I am Leroy. I'm from Boxburg. Yeah, I'm not going to do this. Yeah, if you have to pay it, the attorney says you signed it. The bank says, you signed it. I said, no. Then they did me they, they did a favor. There was a huge, uh, there was a wall here, which I broke. Okay. To make the parking bigger. Sure. And there was a generator, an old generator in okay. there. And then they took the generator out, which yeah. was fixed. Yeah. And they took a few gas, some gas things that were the inside wall. So I said, ah, okay, you want your 260, bring back my generator and bring back my, my gas boxes or whatever they were. And they the said, no. The conversation changed. Yeah, I said, I want it back now. I, I wanted to see it on the property. I wanted bolted in. I sure. wanted where it was before. Yeah, yeah. And that's how the penalty interest oh, wow. um, was waived. So if you don't know any, when you sign in and offer to purchase, in normal cases, you have where it says uh, fixtures and fittings. Yeah. And anything, if you're to turn the house or property upside down, Anything that doesn't fall off, it is. It's yours. Fixtures and fixtures. fixtures yeah. and that's what you're buying. That's what you're buying. Uh, but these guys then, you know, they wanted to steal. Yeah. Um, actually, they took it away. They took it away. They did. Yeah. They did. Right. Steal. So that was number one. That's one. Number two was the municipalities. This building is right opposite the municipality. Isn't they, that a good thing? It was a nonsense thing. <laughs> I changed from rubbish to nonsense, right? <laughs> <laughs> Every person in Edmonds was, that building was looking through that window and finding something. They proved it, but when they came back, they were like, okay, we proved it, but the windows needed to be here. We didn't see that when we proved it. This needs to be here. What about the sewer? What about this? What about this? So they were here constantly. So it's like someone who is at the council and they see, you know, you're now progressing and they just check out and through just the window. Check. And they're like, and they miss something. No, man. There's something wrong. There's here. something wrong here. And they give you a call. Give you a Mr. call. Mr. Slava, come Mr. through, please. Um, are you there? I see the windows come are and too get low. Your good tents. And these things cost money. Eh? Changing Co contractors don't just change things because they like you. Yep, yep. It's, it ticks up all 100%. these little changes. It ticks up. So, yep. so that's number two municipality. But it's good. Good thing now I know them all. Now they know me. Now we. We're good friends. So with, with yeah. future projects in, in, in the area in Okuruleni, it's easy now. I can. So you can ask for the full scope of what needs to be done. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be piecemeal. Because mm. with piecemeal comes with bigger budgets. Yeah. And unexpected budgets. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, and now I know before, listen, with the fire, sewer. Now I know to get these things in advance. This project hit me sometimes. With a few things hit us. But, uh, but the, the professional team should have... That, that was going to be my question. That, then. Yeah, but but um, I think, and that's why I'm saying as well that the professional team are not the professional, but there's some things that you need as the owner, as the need to come in and say, listen, guys, it's still your did you property. check this? Did you do, yes. remember they're doing their yes. job? It's not there. They're not taking out the loan. 100%. They're not putting the risk in. They do have the yeah, yeah. The, but 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 that's why with the with so municipalities. Check your professional team, you need to be on them, right? 100%. And the third one was with the QS and the contractor. Yeah. Every certificate was a nightmare. Right. Contractor felt he did a million's work, the contractor felt you did 300,000 work. <laughs> right. 
Next month, contractor felt he did 1.5, QS felt he did 500,000 work. So that was a fight. They were swearing each other. All the time. Final certificate. And when they're swearing each other, they're calling me. Yeah. And I, I'm not a QS. I can't evaluate how much bricks are in here, you put in here. Yes, I, I don't yes. know how to how much cement went, went in, how much plaster. Yeah. So anyway, and the final the final certificate they were about a million, 1.2 million a pot. Wow. So the so the contractor got an attorney, pulled a Leon on the building, which says that he occupies the building now until we've sorted out the final account. Because he wants his one million. He wants his one million. Yeah. He got an attorney. I had to get an attorney, and we were sending each other letters, yeah. romantic letters, and then from there we were in the attorney's office, like in a movie. It was, it was actually quite cool now that it's over, sitting and, and going through it, and then going out and, no, oh, I want my million. We said, listen, you're not going to get that. We're going to give you <laughs> 300,000. No, 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 no. Okay, give me 800. No, you're getting 300. Okay, no, 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 no. So it was like back and forth with attorneys. It looked like a movie scene, in and out, two yeah. groups. This one goes that one. And but, but Leroy, when you're going through that whole process, psychologically, where were you? Because this is your first. Yeah. You, you, you're seeing one million here, right? you got a project. The project, TAF has given you money, mm. and the, you're supposed to be banking in some money now on this property. Yeah. You are not. Your contractor now is saying that, look, I've put in my million in here. I'm not going to give you the keys. Mm. And you are in the middle of all of this. Psychologically, where are you? Stressed. But I was stressed. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, yeah, man. You Meetings with the contractor. Hey, listen, this, 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 this. Meetings with the QS. Where are we? In between. Okay, let's... What did we do wrong? What did the contractor do wrong? So you were in there trying to negotiate um, right through. So some moments it's... Some moments it's fine. Everyone's happy. And we come here and we have our meeting and we sort things out and then tomorrow um, things are... So yeah, it was slightly stressed. I must say for a year or so, it was... You lost weight? I've lost weight. A few grey hairs as well. Can you guys see it? <laughs> a few grey hairs. No, that was there. But anyway. But, but, but literally, going through all of this stress, um, how, did you, how did you manage to navigate that? What was your supporting structure for you to navigate through that? Look, I think the, 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 the bank was good as well. Okay. Because the bank, they came in as well. They came in, I said, listen, you got, because they've got their own QS that comes in and sees. Sure. So they were quite cool. The bank was cool um, with that. They yeah. came in to say, listen, my QS says this, the contractor says this. What do you guys say? Right. Come as an independent in and say, what do you guys? Right. So they came like in. That, that. Was, that was quite cool. And obviously, yeah, you're... Your God, it was a prayer. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. So those are the three, I think. What was it? What was the first one? Um, negotiation. Make sure, make sure that you check the, your legal your documents with a professional. Everything else that's going in there. Yeah. yeah. And okay. In closing, you got a building now. Mm -hmm. And... Is it giving you the returns that you are looking for? Yeah, it is. Look, lockdown, we forgot about COVID and lockdown. That was because when we got all the approvals, the legal things were, were finished in Feb and then they closed us in. Around about March or so. Around about March. So then yeah. we had like five people in or less. Five out of your 32. Five out of 31. 31, yeah. And then I think two also moved out when it was lockdown. So then the building was basically empty. Throughout so, the seasons? No, then we started pushing in. Sure. So I didn't have lockdown. I... <laughs> you had a business to run. It's lockdown as well. It's as well. So I'm a then. We can't have lockdowns here, guys. It's, I was... I was here. Yeah, I, was, I was working right through lockdown. Pushing people in, advertising, making sure... Pushing the agents. Hey, guys, but that's the no benefit. Lockdown. But that's the benefit of staying closer to your investments. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. if I'm investing, let's say, in another town, all of a sudden, that's very difficult for me because I can't... You can't drive, can't you can't fly. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the benefits of me being in Boxburg is that I was on the agent saying, listen, guys, we can't... There's no yeah. days off here. Let's push them in. Now, the challenge was people moved in 
But then some people lost their jobs as well, so it would have been, so then we had to let, then they moved out again. So then you get excited, there's five that move in, but two got retrenched or something happened the last month. Yeah. And then they needed to move out again, which, which was... Okay. Yeah. So, so, so that was some. So, someone is moving people, in now. People are moving in. People are moving in now. With well done. Fridge. Well done. My man. Okay. Hey, level one, we're still moving in. All right. Awesome. Boxburg, come move into. We've got about five units open <laughs> for you. Awesome stuff. Leroy, I, I know you don't have to read my book because you're a legend. Yeah, I must have read you're it. You're more legend than I am. I must have read it, eh? But there's a little something for you. And thank you for allowing us to come through and see your building and what mm -hmm. you do. And uh, here is to a little bit many mores. Enjoy. Amen. And um, yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks, TJ. Awesome stuff. Thanks, my brother. Thanks for coming out. Appreciated. Thanks yeah. for taking the time. And yeah, I'm going to go open this. I'm excited to see what's in here, though. Eh? Right. So. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of uh, our episode. Um, this is Leroy. Leroy has been in the game for much longer than I've been. He's doing cool buildings with cool colors. And um, I think it just takes about starting. The more you start, the more you can, you can do great things. Any closing tips from you? Um, yeah, I think that's a good one there. Right? I think that's my one start, right? Do your re research, learn, but then start. Awesome and, stuff. So. Boom!